When I, uh, I discussed it with my family and they said, you know, you realize this is really a, a terrific award and, and you know, you should be proud of being part of, of receiving it. When I came around to realizing that it, it truly was an honor and something that, uh, uh, that, that we're very appreciative to, uh, to be recognized for. Uh, my great grandfather was the youngest of nine children uh, in Switzerland. And the oldest, second oldest brother, Louis, uh, immigrated to California and started growing apples on what's now Martinelli Street off of uh, East Lake Avenue. And uh, uh, then when my great-grandfather came over, gosh, probably 10 years or so later, then uh, he started making cider in a lean-to on the side of his, of his brother's barn and, and started the, the cider business at that time. In 1885, they moved the plant from that location, which is now the Elks Club, to the current location here on East Beach Street across from Wasseville High School and uh, you know, modernized the plant at that time, which in those days still involved mostly hand labor. The juice was all poured into in the bottles by hand and, and labeled by hand. And uh, during that era, uh, we made fresh cider that was sold right, right off the press, basically. Um, and then, because there was no refrigeration and they didn't have ways of preserving cider for, uh, to make it shelf stable like they do. Then pasteurization was developed in the, just before the prohibition, which actually turned out to be a, a great benefit because we made a hard cider, which was what kept the business going uh, during the non-cider season, which was a fermented champagne cider. And so it was shelf stable. You put a cork in it and it was good just like wine on the shelf. During prohibition, those products were all outlawed. So pasteurization had just been developed. I think it was 1917 to 1919 in there. And my grandfather um, learned the process and then brought it to Watsonville. And we started making cider pasteurized that was shelf stable that could be sold all year round. We have people in our community who don't know we're here. And when they do, they're shocked. Like, wow, Martinelli Cider. In Watsonville, you're kidding. How long have you been there? Well, I mean, forever, really. I mean, since the beginning. And it really is, uh, it's a terrific place. I mean, the, region, the reason we're here in the first place was because this is where my ancestors settled, primarily because it was an ideal climate for growing very high quality apples. We subsequently benefited from the fact that all these yummy varieties were being grown here, particularly the Newtown Pippin, uh, which really is the signature apple in our blend because it has the perfect balance of of sweetness and, and tartness. And by far the vast majority of the apples that go into our product are coming from the local area and most people can't believe that. We pay a higher than market value for the, for the crop in order to encourage the growers to keep their uh, crops in the ground and we buy every single apple that we can get our hands on in this community because they're of higher quality. It was a sad thing for Watsonville when Green Giant decided to leave the, the community, but it was an opportunity for us. And it was probably, I would say there's no question, it was the thing that kept us in Watsonville because at that, that time we had outgrown our East Beach plant. And we were looking at expanding in the area, but quite honestly, there was no land available. And especially processing land, land that's available uh, for food processing that has uh, wastewater connections and, and, uh, and all the infrastructure that, uh, that we need in order to function. That plant came with all of that stuff. And once their equipment was removed, we were able to move right in and it just fit us like a glove. It's sort of the typical thing that people will say when they've been chosen for an award like this is, well, I just wanted to give back to the community. And you know, how do you say it any other way? You know, that, that is what it's about. And because we're members of this community and our families are here and we live in this town, I mean, our family in particular, one of the things I'm very proud of is the fact that we live in Watsonville. We are members of this community. And I coach the, the local little leagues. Um, I coach at the YMCA for the, on the basketball program. And I get to know the kids in this community that don't go to school with my kids. And that's one of, the, one of my favorite things is, is, uh, is, is being involved in a broader part of our community. My mom was, was, had the longest tenure in the history of the uh, uh, Power Valley Unified School District on the school board. And uh, you know, she became involved, quite frankly, when I had a really horrible teacher in seventh grade. And she said, it's time for me to become involved. And so she joined the school board and it turned out to be um, you know, really a crown jewel in, in, you know, in her contribution to the community. This year we're celebrating our 140th anniversary. We've been uh, in business for 140 years in Watsonville 
And uh, we're very excited about that. I think we're waiting for 150 to do uh, a really blowout celebration, but it's still, it's a milestone that's, that's worthy of, of recognition. And we greatly look forward to the next 140 years because I fully expect that this business is gonna be here thriving uh, at least as, as far as I can see till I hand the baton and uh, the way we're raising our kids. I've got four kids and one of them in particular, I'm not gonna say which one, seems to be interested in, in picking up uh, the footsteps in my footsteps. So hopefully we'll be able to do that and, and uh, look forward to that.